Today we have a good optimization problem where it asks us to find the volume of the largest right circular cone that can be inscribed in a sphere of radius r. So uh, as we have pictured there, we're trying to get a cone fit inside a sphere and how big can that cone be? Uh, keeping in mind that our cone, it's gonna have a constant radius capital R. Uh, so no matter how big our cone is, um, it, the sphere is staying at a capital radius R. That's not changing. Um, so to demonstrate that, you know, I could have a cone looking like this, or maybe it's a little squat and then it'd be pinned up against the sides. Maybe that, maybe that cone has the biggest volume. Or maybe it's a little skinny guy. And maybe the cone looks like that. But however the cone looks, uh, we're looking for the one that gives the greatest volume. So start off this problem. Think about what are we trying to optimize? Well, the volume of the right circular cone. So I need to think of the formula for that. And the formula for the volume of a right circular cone is one third pi r squared h, where r squared is the radius of the base of the cone, so that would be my r, and then h being the height of the cone, the straight up and down height. Okay, so now I've got my volume, but then in optimization problems, I need that equation, my optimizing equation, to be in one variable, because I'm going to take the derivative, and I only want one thing changing. I don't want two different variables changing. I don't want to deal with multiple, multiple variables here. Um, so I need to look at my primary equation here and think, how can I substitute for an equation here to try and get it in one variable? Uh, this one is a little interesting. Now looking at what I have, I notice I have this r here. While, while it's constant, there is a way to write my height in terms of r. So this part of the height, well, that would just be r, capital R, the radius of the sphere. But then this remaining bit, you know, no matter how small or big the um, right cone is, we'd have that remaining bit. What would that be? Um, we're just going to label it whatever you want. We'll call it y. Just kind of think of the y-axis. So your total height, your total height is going to be height equal to capital R plus Y. Okay, so now my volume formula is one third pi small radius squared times R plus Y. Oh, great. Now I just introduced another variable, so I now have three variables. Well, I mean, capital R is a constant, but still, how did that help? Well, it helped because I'm actually going to double down on this y idea. And I'm going to look at my radius of my cone, so small r right here, and think, can I write that in any different way? I'm going to look at the center of my sphere, draw a line here. What would that length be? Capital R, of course, because that from the center of the sphere to the edge is always its radius. So I have capital R there which then I have this right triangle. And what do we know about right triangles? Well, hypotenuse squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, or in this case, y squared plus r squared. So and now I can solve for r. And in fact, I can solve for r squared, which is even better. Rotate those around. It is r squared minus y squared. I now have r in terms of r and y, which is great because if I substitute into my maximizing equation, I am left with something in terms of y and capital R, which is even better because, as I said, capital R is a constant. So this is in terms of one variable, y. So that means. When I take the derivative, I'll be able to take the derivative with respect to y. So first, let me just clean this up just a little bit. If I FOIL this, 
I end up getting r to the third plus r squared y minus y squared r minus y cubed. Okay, and that would be my volume in terms of that y. And now I need to optimize it. I need to find the maximum um, point of this. At what y value do I get the maximum volume? I'm going to take a quick side note though because we have to think about our feasible domain. My domain, what can y be? Well, y has to be greater than zero, right? It's a length. So um, our interval, we're going to start at zero. And what's the maximum y can be? Um, you might initially think uh, it's the full diameter of our sphere, so 2r. But because height is equal to r plus y right here, um, if y was 2r, I would then have a height of equaling 3r, which is outside of my sphere. So in fact, the biggest that y can be is capital R. If y is capital R, then the height of our cone would be the full uh, diameter of the sphere. So, okay, there's our feasible domain from 0 to r. And we'll keep that in mind as we differentiate our problem and look for... Uh, the maximum values. Okay, so to take the derivative dv dt, sorry, dv dy, derivative with respect to y, we'll keep the pi over 3 out there. r to the third, that is a constant, so that goes to 0. r squared y goes to r squared. y squared r means 2y r and then minus 3y squared. Now you now I need to find the critical numbers of this, so it's going to set equal to zero. And I'm actually going to rewrite this, change the order around a little bit. Because now I see setting this equal to zero might not be so easy, but I do have this quadratic where y squared, y, and y to the zeroth. So I have a quadratic. So I need to solve that. I could factor this. Um, I could actually do that, but it's a trinomial with lead factor of negative three. So maybe a little pain of factoring that. So instead, what I'll do is I'll just use the quadratic formula with my a, b, c. And I have to remember the r in this. So negative b, that would be a positive two r plus or minus the square root of b squared for r squared minus 4 times a which is negative 3 times c which is r squared. Don't let the fact that our constants have the r in there scare you too much. It actually comes out pretty nicely. 2 times a. Okay, this is what x equals. So this is 2r plus or minus the square root of, okay, negative four times negative three is 12, so I have four plus 12, 12 r squared over negative six, which is equal to, oh, sorry, four plus 12 is 16. So I have two r plus or minus four r over negative six. So on the one hand, I have six r over negative six, or, 2 minus 4, which is negative 2r over negative 6. Clean this up. I get x equal to, and you know, we actually in terms of y. So it should be y equals negative r or r over 3. But as our domain says up here, r has to be between 0. Or sorry, y has to be between 0 and r. Okay, so I have what appears to be my critical number. My critical number at r divided by 3. Now, um, I just want to make sure that's a maximum. So I do a quick first derivative test. So I would set up my intervals, and I'm kind of going from 0 to r over 3, 
and then from r over 3 to r in my intervals I could pick a test value r divided by 4 I could pick a test value r divided by 2 over here and plugging those in you would plug them into the first derivative now um, I'll just do this for you it ends up being that we would get that it's increasing here, decreasing here. Once you plug that in, you just get a plus and a minus. Um, kind of messy with this. But that means we have a max at r divided by 3. Good. That's what we're looking for. So when is the maximum volume that's gone? Well, when it's y is r divided by 3. Whoa, well, that doesn't help us too much. So let's back up. Um, look at some of our formulas up top. We've got volume is equal to one third pi, because I want to find that maximum volume. So right now, I am looking at this equation right here where it is in terms of r and y and plugging in what I know y has to be. Okay, right, so one third pi times r cubed plus r squared times r divided by 3 minus r divided by 3 squared times r minus r divided by 3 cubed. Okay, this is just the messy algebra now as we finish up the problem. So I have pi over 3 times r cubed plus r cubed over 3 minus r cubed over 9, so that'd be r squared over 9 times r, minus r cubed over 27, cubing the top and the bottom. Okay, combining all these, so why don't we get them all over 27, so that we can add these fractions. Um, this one times 9 would be 9r cubed over 27, minus 3r cubed over 27, minus 1r cubed over 27. Common denominator so that we can add these fractions. I have 27 plus 9, which is 36, minus 3, 33, minus 1, 32. 32r cubed over 27. One last multiplication gives me 32 pi r cubed over 81. That would be the maximum volume of a right circular cone inscribed in a sphere of radius r.